everybody, welcome along to our post-match show. Uh, good to have you with us, Kate Abdo, Thierry Henry, Jamie Carragher, Micah Richards. Feels like a significant night in European football when you watch Liverpool lose 5-2 uh, at Anfield against Real Madrid. We saw another game this evening as well, which saw Napoli won, uh, win 2-0 against Frankfurt. Napoli just continuing to shine at the moment in European football. We're going to start by talking about that Liverpool game, because Jamie, uh, your former club, we asked you before the game had started, on the back of those couple of positive results that we'd seen for Liverpool, did that now mean that they had turned the corner? You were cautious in your answer. Does that now feel like a, a resounding answer? Yeah, it was nonsense. Absolute nonsense that Liverpool were back in the last two games. And that's why I was cautious before the game. They played against an Everton team, one of the worst performances I've seen in a derby game from an Everton team who did nothing. I was at the Newcastle game as well. Newcastle with 10 men created chances. and, and, I, and if Lucas had had 11 men on the game, they'd have got back to 2-2. I'm convinced of that because Liverpool, right now, and not right now, all season, as I said before, have been an absolute shambles defensively. Now, this team had a great defensive record last season, but we know the midfield doesn't have the energy anymore. The attacking players in the front three don't press like, or certainly don't have the cohesion that was there before with maybe a Firmino and a Mane, so they're new to it, Nunes and Gakpo. So this Liverpool defence now who we've been told for years have got some of the best players in the world, can't cope. Because for, for years they've had a front six in front of them who probably worked harder and smarter than any other team in world football. And now that's gone, mm. it's completely fell apart. And yeah, I mean, I keep... I wouldn't say making excuses is the wrong word, but what I would say is because as a Liverpool fan, we absolutely adore this manager and team, and they've done so much for the club in the last four or five years. I hate you to say anything negative because they give you so much. But Liverpool are eighth in the Premier League. They've just been battered 5-2 in the Champions League. I know it's Real Madrid, but these are the two teams who were in the final last year. It's not acceptable what we're watching this season. And we keep looking for reasons and excuses. And But no, it's nowhere near good enough. And uh, defensively right now, and what makes me laugh, <laughs> I'm not that horrible. Virgil van Dijk said I wouldn't get in that back four about two months oh. ago. <laughs> God, I think I'd take his place at the moment. But, uh, <laughs> no, it's, it, it, no, some of the players there, I mean, Joe Gomez tonight, that was, I mean, listen, we've all had bad nights, real bad nights as players. And... Maybe I shouldn't kick someone in the dark because I'm sure he'll feel terrible right now. But I think Liverpool would keep talking about midfield players Liverpool need. And that's right. I think Liverpool need defenders as well. Because, as I said, when they get exposed, they can't defend. Uh, so, Thierry, to what extent do you look at this game and think that Liverpool were that poor? Or was it just that Real Madrid were outstanding tonight? Uh, first and foremost, I, I sympathise with Jamie because when you look at your team getting battered like that, you know, the way it speaks... He goes above and beyond because he's hurt, because he's, he's, he's a Liverpool fan. Now you need to go back to the, to the truth. You considered against Brentford too many goals for my liking. You considered against Wolverhampton too many goals for my liking. Brighton, so let alone when you're going to play against Real Madrid. Um, but I wanted to know where they were. And I saw a fragile team, more than fragile. I'll tell you why. You were 2-0 up. That's exactly the start that you would like to have against a Madrid team, against any team in Europe at Anfield. And they couldn't even keep that. Yes, Alison, Alison Becker made a mistake, but they didn't bail him out. Thibaut Courtois makes a mistake. That's a big team. They bailed him out. Mm. And yes, with the help of some movements and or not of the Liverpool players, but they are fragile. Something needs to change, and I don't think club needs to go. That's that's not what I'm saying. But some of the players don't have the level anymore to play for for Liverpool, and it, it happens sometimes to the best. To me, happened to me, happened to you, Jamie, happened to Micah. I don't. I think they need. It's the end of an era, and it's been for a little while uh, like that this season. It's the end of an era, and it happens. And I'm not having to go at Liverpool, but you have to call. Uh, we say in France, a cat, a cat. You, you see a cat, it's not a dog. You have to call it. They're eight, they're not playing well, they're conceding a lot. We all love what they did recently, but you also have to say when some things are not going right, and it is not getting right, going right. And, you know, it's, it's a tough one when I look at this and I see Liverpool conceding five at home and getting outplayed. When I see a guy like Luka Modric at his age getting that ball and just bursting through the midfield like, like they were not there and, and passing and passing the ball to Vinicius Junior, Vinicius Junior to Benzema and toying with the, with the goalkeeper. I just think that is not good enough. That team gave us 
so much joy uh, throughout the years, but right now they're not. So they need to reinvent themsel themselves and, and make sure that they can keep their head up until the end of the season. Tough night. How are you feeling? Yeah, I think it's a reality check. Um, as you say, you got off to the perfect start. Exactly what you need in a European night start. Fast, get yourself in front, build on it, tune it up. But then from that moment, um, Real Madrid came back into it, scored quite quick, fantastic goal. From then, Liverpool were dominated and outclassed for large periods, periods from there. How worrying to concede five? Well, look, I think any team, any club, if you, if you concede five goals, there's got to be an inquest into why and how. And I'm sure Jürgen will do that in, in the coming days. Um, I think everyone will be a bit raw on the back of that defeat. Look, Liverpool don't concede five goals here at Anfield. Um, if they do, it's, it's very rare. Um, so, yeah, there's going to be a bit of soul searching, a bit of looking in the middle, sure. There always is when you concede that many goals. And, um, yeah, it went good enough. To, to come here and to manage this crowd, we were walking around up to the studio from our position before on the pitch, all looking at each other going, wow, this place is bouncing, they're up for it. Went 2-0 down and then been able to manage that as well in this cauldron. It, it was, the, the, the size of that job, that they, the task they had ahead of them at that period when they went 2-0 down, the experience to manage the game and to get back in. I think I agree with Stevie, they scored at good times, scored quick, but the class in those players, the experienced players and the younger players, the blend that they have on that pitch. I never had them down as being a team that capable to, to, to repeat and win again, but now after that, you have to put them in Some, there. Sometimes in football, you've got to hold your hand up mm. and say the best team won, you're outclassed, you were dominated, they were better. Uh, in most areas of the pitch, you'd have to say. Mm. Uh, they got off to a slow start, but their experience, the reaction was absolutely top class. And we're witnessing here absolute greatness in Modric and Benzema. You know, you're talking about players that are operating on a, on a different level than most. What you have got, though, is a Liverpool team that, that they play in a way that if it crumbles, you know, a good team like Real Madrid can pick them apart. They're so brave mm. and that's why they're so good. Mm. You know, when they're on, they're on and they're yeah. impossible to stop. But when it's just not going right, they can be picked apart and especially against good teams like that. I think what a great thing about this Real Madrid team as well is they have a number of players who can take the ball and take the sting out of the game. Modric for one, Benzema another, Vinicius, Rodrigo now starting to do it. Those players, they give you that little bit of time the and composure. The young kids are doing it. Camavinga's exactly, yeah. doing it. Like, he's 20 years old, but he's mm. receiving the ball in, in tight areas like a really mature, experienced player with mm. under pressure. Well, look, we're going to go through it all. We've got two touch screens ready to go. Plenty of analysis coming your way. A painful watch at times for Liverpool fans. And, of course, we will talk about... Wow, welcome back. That was entertaining, wasn't it? We've had four. We could have had more. Let's get straight to it, because some of that was brilliant. Some of it was utterly bizarre. Well, yeah, and, and similar goals as well, wasn't it? A couple of goalkeeper mistakes. I think the first goal was the, was the pick of them in my eyes. That ball from Trent Alexander-Arnold was brilliant. Um, Gakpo taking up that position, that... that Number nine, but dropping off into, into a 10 position. And then this ball from Sal. It was a great run as well from Nunez. But I think the whole goal characterised, in, you know, in a few words, is three great passes. This one to start with. We see that Gakpo position. And then all of a sudden, by Cetic, he gets the ball under a bit of pressure. It's an easy enough ball, but his touch needs to be good. And then the final one from Sal. It was just unbelievable and a great run, Stevie, as well. Yeah, it's the perfect start for Liverpool. What I liked about it as well is they never, you know, they, they built on that. You know, they kept on being aggressive, kept on chasing lost causes, and within 15 minutes, they're 2 0 up. A um, couple of people losing the foot in here in midfield. Camavinga, Liverpool pounce on it, again looking to play forward. Bit of a loose touch from Gakpo, you'd say, but, you know, getting after it, putting Courtois under pressure. He's all left foot, gets it all wrong, and it's the perfect start for Liverpool. A lot of slipping ones in the first half. There was a fair few players, a couple of players in the middle there, uh, both slipping. But Salah, I mean, he makes it look easy. I know it, it, it seems easy. He's only got a tiny little channel to hit that through into the near post. It's, it's been gets, a Gets the reward, though, he for like, you know, chasing yeah. lost causes and putting the keeper under pressure, especially when they're all left-footed like mm. Courtois is. Yeah, you can make mistakes, but you've got to be there as well to pounce on them mistakes. And then this, this goal, this is absolutely fabulous from Vinicius Jr. Great interchange and, and play around the box, Benzema coming out, teasing, probing, and the finish is absolutely exquisite. When you see the amount of bodies around him, that he manages to squeeze that in. It's a great goal. But his position coming in there, you can see him teasing defenders, tricky. Makes it hard for the defenders to want to come out and engage. But you, you, I think you've got to get out of there. When you've got that many bodies around you, that's your security. When, if you're 1v1, I understand staying back, but you've got bodies around you, get out and make it more difficult 
saying that it is a phenomenal finish. But again, look, Klopp there gesturing once his defenders out, getting a bit closer, and it didn't happen. And then this Honest. modern football playing out from the back, Stephen. Yeah, the, the youngster obviously by chance just gets a little bit excited in the middle of the park. Um, Joe doesn't give the keeper the perfect back pass, but still, I think Allison's got to deal with it. Yeah. I feel for him because he's been Liverpool's best player all season. Um, he'll he'll be regretting not just emptying it to the left side of the pitch. You know, he can even take a touch with his right foot and come onto his left foot if he can. But it's been it's been very much similar both halves a lot of quality and two big individual mistakes this is part of modern day football though now isn't it it's it's the risk and reward of Mm. you're asking your keepers to play 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 when the ball comes back in our day that would have been launched up the pitch and you just reshuffled and and rejigged just uh, your system and your shape nowadays you you want to pass things like that are going to happen it's inevitable entertaining eh? not bad i wonder what the second 45 has in store